Welcome. This is attorney Paul DeLaurie, and you're here to learn proven strategies to bulletproof your assets, your buildings, and your business from any kind of liability, including divorce, bankruptcy, frivolous lawsuits, tax liens, and government actions. Again, my name is Paul DeLaurie. I'm an attorney in Arizona, and I help clients throughout the United States. And I'll tell you more about me in a couple of minutes, but in the meanwhile, let's make sure that you're in the right place. You're in the right place if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner. Also, if you're a high profile individual, such as an athlete, entertainer, public figure, such as a politician, or anyone else who's recognized in the news. You're in the right place if you're a doctor. And here, let's talk about Dr. Pappas. It's not his real name, but he was an OBGYN, and he called me after a series of unfortunate events resulted in the death of a baby, which is obviously an occupational hazard of OBGYNs. Now, I had to tell him that it was too late to do any serious asset protection planning because anything he did would not only be unwound as a fraudulent transfer, but it would also be a crime. And he literally ended up getting a $2.5 million judgment against him and ended up filing bankruptcy because he didn't do what we're about to share with you today. This is also for you if you're an attorney. And here, let's talk about Mark. Mark is a trust and estate lawyer who represented two brothers who were named trustees of their parents' trust. After the parent died, the father attempted to amend the trust to disinherit the third child, his thir third child, his daughter. The father then died, and it turned out that the amendment the attempted amendment was not valid. Now, Mark, the attorney, tried to enforce the trust amendment for the benefit of his two clients. However, he didn't realize that in doing this, he was aiding and abetting his client's breach of their fiduciary duty to the daughter. Now, the court found Mark, the attorney, jointly and severally liable and imposed sanctions. The judgment against Mark was close to $500,000, and his professional liability insurance did not cover that because professional liability insurance only covers claims by clients, not angry sisters of clients. This is also right for you if you have over $3 million. And why is that? Well, if you have any significant degree of success or wealth, someone could want to come after you just because they see you as a deep pocket. I see that all the time. Or maybe you simply want financial privacy. You're tired of people snooping on the internet or on the public record and seeing what you own. So, if you're a business owner, if you're a high profile individual, if you're a doctor, if you're an attorney, if you're an investor with a net worth of over $3 million, then you're in the right place. So let's talk about some things that you're gonna be discovering today. Number one, what you own can be taken from you. Number two, don't trust anyone, maintain control and flexibility. Number three, put your assets in a vault. Number four, segregate your assets. And number five, sue yourself first. Now, I know that uh, some of these concepts you might be a little bit familiar with and some, uh, you know, some are pretty advanced. So please stay with me throughout the web class and I need you to lean forward and take notes because if you follow what we're about to teach, you're going to be able to sleep at night knowing that your business and personal assets are protected from a divorce, even if you don't have a prenup. You'll be protected from IRS audits and other government actions. You'll be protected from lawsuits. And you'll be protected from bankruptcy, as well as accidents. So in addition to that, your retirement will be assured, and your children's college money will be protected, and your children will be protected from their own bad judgment. So let's talk about some Famous examples, Steven Spielberg, his first wife, actress Amy Irving, contested the validity of their prenup during their 1989 divorce and walked away with $100 million. Uh, he had a prenup, but he didn't do the rest of what we're about to share with you, and it cost him $100 million. Ivana Trump, the first ex-wife of now President Donald Trump, challenged her prenup in 1991, landing herself with $20 million in cash, a $14 million home, a housing allowance on top of that, and $350,000 a year in alimony. So you've got to do what I'm about to share with you. Now, someone who did it right, even though he's maybe a little bit notorious for uh, different reasons, but O.J. Simpson, 
Now, obviously, he had a lot of mistakes unrelated to his personal to this and his personal life personal life. But the one thing that he did right was he put a good asset protection plan in place. He played the game, the asset protection game to near perfection. And he didn't even try and hide any money offshore, which frankly, most people should not do. Uh, with the help of his asset protection plan, even though he was acquitted of the double homicide of Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman, he lost the civil suit for $33.5 million. But despite that fact that he lost the case, they couldn't touch his wealth. They could not touch his defined benefit retirement plan valued at more than $4 million and a lot of his other personal assets, including his personal residence, uh, because he did it the right way. Whatever else you might think of OJ, whether you think he's guilty or not, he did the asset protection part right. And then, of course, there's Donald Trump himself, who over the last 30 years has been subject to 4,095 lawsuits. And by the time you listen to this recording, I'm sure that's going to be a, a bigger number than that. But it literally doesn't matter how many times Donald Trump gets sued because he has a bulletproof asset protection plan in place, in place. And he knows that it doesn't matter how many lawsuits he gets or how many more times he gets sued, whether he's president or not, they can't touch his money. So this is Magellan Law. I'm the founder, Paul DeLauri. And let me tell you a little bit about me and why you should be listening to the material I'm presenting. My uncle made money in business turnarounds, and I got to spend a few months with him when I was in my 20s. And I got intrigued about what he did for a living and how he helped other people. And I liked the business owners that he was working with, and I wanted to figure out how to help other business owners like he did, like my uncle did. He suggested that I go to law school and study business law there, and actually that's what I did. The funny thing is that I'm also a trained musician. I won the All-Ireland World Championship on the bagpipes when I was 15 years old. You know the cartoon, hey, quit that crazy band and go to law school? <laughs> well, I was actually the reverse. I said I wanted to go to business school and law school, swear to God, uh, and my family talked me out of it and said, no, don't go to law school or learn how to make money. Instead, be a musician, and you're world-class at that. Go do that. Well, I did, I listened and I got a master's degree in saxophone performance, but eventually I ended up going to the University of Iowa College of Law, uh, where I graduated with honors. And after graduating law school and while there, I worked in the family business, which was a Medicare, Medicaid certified home health agency. But I hated healthcare law, and don't get me started on that. Uh, I wanted to help people and families, uh, not giant hospitals and corporations. So I joined a prestigious law firm that focused on asset protection and dynasty estate planning. Uh, and then there was a death in my family, and I inherited it a significant sum of money. I hired an asset protection lawyer to protect the inheritance. So why did I hire an asset protection lawyer when that's actually what I was at the time? Well, Abraham Lincoln said, he who represents himself has a fool for a client. And in other words, don't try to do your own legal work, even if you're a lawyer, because it's hard to be objective and to use good judgment. Uh, so I hired this asset protection lawyer to protect my inheritance. But unfortunately, he messed up. The other lawyer created what he called a bridge trust uh, that named me as both a trustee and beneficiary. And supposedly, I would be able to later resign as trustee and then a Cook Islands Trust Company would take over. I mean, it sounds really good in theory. But um, in the meanwhile, after this happened, um, I got sued, got a judgment against me. And then when I later wanted to sell my house, the title company told me that I would have to pay the creditor of mine before giving me any of the money, before I got the equity. And I said, well, why? My house is in an asset protection trust. I'm all secure. And they said, no, you're the current trustee of your trust. You're in control, so your creditors get paid out of the house proceeds. When I contacted the Cook Islands Trust Company that was supposed to take over as trustee, they said they had no record of me and couldn't help. Uh, and that was after paying a ton of money to this other asset protection lawyer. Uh, but the other lawyer screwed up. The bridge trust turned out to be worth about as much as a roll of toilet paper, and I was liable for the money. The title company, just to explain this a little bit more, uh, the title company explained or, or assumed that it was my trust, like maybe you have a revocable living trust now where you're the trustee. Uh, 
except that I had this expensive bridge trust. Uh, my only option at the time was to cancel the sale of the home and probably spend a year or more litigating in court to enforce the terms of the trust to try to protect myself from the creditor. But frankly, uh, that would have probably failed because um, the act of me resigning and then transferring the trusteeship to uh, a Cook Islands company would have been considered a fraudulent transfer. And even though it was an offshore trust, the real estate was here in the U.S. And a U.S. court doesn't care that there's a Cook Islands Trust Company or something like that that, that is trustee. They're just going to enforce U.S. laws here, the, the real estate's here. And uh, so that no matter what, it wouldn't have helped me. Uh, and anyway, the, the, the problem with this uh, the, is you, you really have to do it the right way uh, ahead of time. You have to do it ahead of time and you have to do it the right way. And, and that brings us back to rule number one, what you own can be taken from you. So I said, there's got to be a better way. And I decided to do some research and some investigation. And then I dove even deeper and I said, what did that lawyer do wrong? And how can I fix it for other people? Because they've, they claim that they've done this for thousands of, of, uh, you know, other people and, uh, you know, set up these bridge trusts. And so I, I was wondering, you know, how can I, how many other people have the same problem that I had? You know, they've paid a lot of money for something that turns out to be worthless. And I found to my chagrin that there are literally thousands and thousands, probably tens of thousands of lawyers nationwide who dabble in estate planning and asset protection planning and are frankly giving incorrect advice. Uh, there are heavily marketed devices promoted by national law firms and national companies and seminars that go city to city uh, selling these documents and these legal plans that are worth less than the paper that they're printed on. One very technique, by the way, I will point out right now is something called a domestic asset protection trust. If you've plunked around on the internet about asset protection at all, I'm sure you've come across the term asset protection trust or domestic asset protection trust. The thing is, uh, there's a huge footnote that they never tell you about, and that's that they only work in one very specific situation. Uh, you have, well, I, we won't go into that. It, it, it's a very unique situation. And other than that, if they ever end up going to court, it's not going to cover you. But that's not how they're sold. They're sold as if they cover, uh, you know, offer complete protection. So one of my clients that I've helped was the husband and wife owners of a sporting goods store. What happened was the sporting goods store had some business trouble and ended up closing its doors. It defaulted on some business loans that the owners had personally guaranteed. And the business owners were sued on the loans. The creditors won. Uh, and there were a total of three and a half million dollars in judgments against the couple. Now, they filed bankruptcy on the business, but never filed personal bankruptcy. Uh, they just continued to li live their lives with this three and a half million dollar judgment against them. And the couple didn't have to lose their home. They didn't lose any jewelry or personal savings or any of their personal assets because they had come to my law firm ahead of time and set things up in the right way, which is what I'm going to be showing you. Then the husband eventually passed away and the, the wife then wanted to uh, sell the home and move closer to her grandchildren. Now, normally, if you sell your house with $3.5 million in liens against it, if you sell your house, the liens are going to get paid off first before, uh, you know, before you get any equity back. Uh, but she and her husband had done things properly. They had taken action early to protect their assets before any of the legal claims had developed. Uh, and because she and her husband had planned ahead of time, her creditors never got paid out of the sale of the house. She was able to sell her house, buy a new house, and what? What do you think? She had cash left over. Yes, and the creditors never got it. Uh, how? Well, she had legal structures very, very similar, almost identical to what I'm about to show you, with, uh, what I'm about to share with you. Uh, and that's when I realized, oh my God, I have to help more people. What I've created and what I've researched and what I've found, it worked. And I said, I've got to share this with others. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this. So I've been doing this since 2004, and I'll talk about some other clients in just a minute, but that's why I'm teaching this to you today. So again, what you're going to discover is that number one, and write these down, please, okay? What you can, 
uh, what you own can be taken from you. So let's dive deep into that. So you don't want to own anything. You want to control it, but not own it, because if you own it, it can be taken from you. And John D. Rockefeller once said, control everything and own nothing. And we'll discuss some exceptions to this rule, uh, such as your personal residence, in just a minute. Uh, by the way, let me do a quick little legal caveat here, okay? Um, I'm not giving specific legal advice here, obviously, because I don't know your unique situation. And also, this video does not establish an attorney-client relationship. If you need help, please contact us, and we'll see if we can help you. So assuming that you qualify and we accept you as a client, what we're going to do is to transfer 99% of your wealth to something that we call an asset vault trust. And this is not the kind of trust that you get off the shelf. Not, the, not from the guy who did your will, who also does some real estate closings and you know, maybe does a personal injury case on the side. Uh, most likely not the kind of trust that your parents have. This is a specific asset vault trust. Now, the big question that I learned the hard way, and now you don't have to because I'm sharing it with you, you should not be the trustee. Uh, so remember rule number one, uh, what you own can be taken from you. And if you're the trustee of your own trust, the court can simply disregard the trust, you know, pretend it doesn't exist, you know, that, that there's no protection. So that's why you shouldn't be the trustee. So who should be the trustee? Well, you can name a trusted relative, a friend, um, a trust company. Uh, and this is actually the point where some of my clients get stuck because they're not sure who they trust, you know, do they actually trust their friend or their, uh, their uncle or their brother that much? Well, don't worry. Uh, there are checks and balances that we're going to put in place. And I've been doing this since, since uh, 2001. And I will help you find a solution. There, there's a way to find a trustee that will work in your situation. So remember, rule number two is don't trust anyone, you know, like Rockefeller said, control everything and own nothing. Uh, and we'll show you how to do that, but uh, we'll help you maintain control and flexibility uh, no matter who you choose as a trustee. Uh, now, regarding the uh, question, who, who uh, can you trust the trustee? You need to make sure that you have checks and balances in place. And number one, you need to retain the power to replace the trustee. And you also need to name what we call a trust protector. Sometimes they go by different names, but trust protector is the most common name. And what it is, is a, um, it's, it, it's a, uh, it's a idea, a, a, a concept that originated in uh, offshore asset protection planning in, in the realm of offshore um, trusts. Uh, because obviously if you're uh, sending millions or billions of dollars um, you know, to Nevis or the Cook Islands, you, you want to have some checks and balances so that they don't steal all of, your, all of your money. So anyway, a trust protector is someone who enforces your wishes. And uh, the powers that you give the trust protector are, for example, to remove and replace the trustee. Uh, and speaking of checks and balances, you then also have the power to remove and replace the trust protector. Uh, so far, what I've described could be just about any irrevocable trust, by the way. But uh, we specifically use an asset vault trust for a number of uh, compelling reasons. One of the advantages is that it can be easily unwound. And if you ever want to um, unwind the trust or transfer things back to you, uh, the assets can be transferred in, uh, well, two ways, two specific ways. Uh, one is that the trustee can use what's called a special power of appointment to transfer the money or the property, whatever, back to you. Also, the trust protector has the power to do that, um, to uh, add you as a beneficiary, so then the trustee can um, transfer things back to you. Um, now, number three, the third rule, uh, you want to put your assets in a vault. And remember, we're talking about the asset vault trust. Now, I mentioned a number of compelling reasons to use the asset vault trust. Um, the, one is that it can be easily un unwound if you ever want to simplify your life. Um, another reason that they work well is that our trusts are effective under the laws of all 50 states uh, plus, federal, uh, plus under the federal law. Uh, and this is radically different from the other options out there. You know, remember the um, highly publicized options that I was talking to you about before? Uh, 
those only work under limited circumstances. So, but the benefit of what we do is you can be assured that our trusts work because they have 200 years of case law supporting our trusts. Uh, so you can feel secure knowing that the legal documents will actually work when the doggy do hits the fan. So remember rule number four, segregate your assets. Now a company that's really good at this is Walmart. Walmart has phenomenal asset protection. If you slip and fall in a Walmart parking lot and you sue Walmart, um, what you're gonna quickly discover is that the owner of that parking lot is not Walmart. No, it's, for example, parking lot number 561 LLC. And the assets in parking lot number 561 LLC are a bunch of shopping carts and some asphalt. So literally, there's nothing to sue, even though you think you're suing Walmart, which is a big multi-billion dollar corporation. Now, the Japanese word for this is zaibatsu, zabatsu. <laughs> it's a concept where literally you have a whole bunch of different companies that share a common ownership. Uh, but these companies are all uh, legally separate and not liable for each other. They all do different things. You might recognize one th down there, Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi is much more than just a car manufacturer. That's only one little, uh, one little component of the whole conglomerate, the Mitsubishi Saibatsu conglomerate. Uh, so just like McDonald's, if you watch that movie, uh, if you watch the movie, um, The Founder, about Ray Kroc, which is a phenomenal movie, by the way. I highly recommend it. Uh, you learned that McDonald's isn't necessarily in the hamburger business. They're in the real estate business. Uh, they make a lot of their money from owning the real estate that the McDonald's restaurant is built on and then leasing that real estate back to the individual franchise owners. So if you're suing McDonald's because their coffee is hot, you know, remember that case? Um, the lady who sued for the coffee being too hot, she didn't take the $3 million from the McDonald's Corporation. No, she got it from the poor individual franchise owner because his asset protection wasn't set in place. McDonald's did just fine. So a historical example of this is the Japanese in World War II. Uh, they had a series of tunnels where literally you would look on the surface and you know the air bombers would be going overhead and they'd say there's nothing there it's just rocks and dirts and some shrubs uh, and all of the different tunnels that the japanese were hiding in were underneath the surface and hidden and protected and the americans didn't know where the japanese were and it's the same way with your assets if if done properly there needs to be these interlocking companies that are hidden beneath the surface so that your hungry creditors and plaintiffs can't see now remember, we said that 99% of your wealth is going to be transferred to the Asset Vault Trust. So what happens to the 1% that isn't? Well, let's get into that. Uh, remember rule number two, you need to maintain control. And rule number four is to segregate your assets. So let's map this out for you. Where your money and all your assets are going to go is this. Uh, first of all, you need to figure out what are safe assets and what are risky assets. Safe assets are things that can't get into car accidents or be accused of sexual harassment, for example. For example, investment accounts can't injure anyone, and neither can art, jewelry, or coin collections. Uh, well, I suppose a, a heavy piece of art could theoretically injure someone, but it's not the piece of art's fault. No one is going to sue the, the, the painting or the bronze sculpture, they're gonna sue the person that placed the bronze sculpture where they did or that hung the, um, hung the painting on the wall negligently. But it, and it, so the assets, the safe assets are gonna go into an asset management limited partnership, family limited partnership. Because that's a lot of words, it is descriptive, but it's a lot of words. I simply am gonna be referring to it as the family bank. Now, risky assets are gonna go into separate LLCs to be owned by the family bank. For example, a risky asset uh, could include rental houses where someone can trip on the sidewalk or get sick from black mold. Uh, and every single piece of rental property would go into its own LLC or into a separate series if you have a series LLC. Series LLCs, by the way, are really good for owning uh, multiple uh, rental houses or um, investment houses. Another risky asset, for example, is a commercial office building uh, where someone can fall down the stairs. And in that case, you put the office building into a separate LLC that's then owned by the family bank, and then you rent it from yourself. 
and also your personal airplane or boat would go into separate LLCs that are owned by the um, family bank, the limited partnership. And any other potentially risky assets will get segregated into additional separate LLCs. So in the case of Walmart, a parking lot where someone can trip and fall, that would go into a separate LLC. And they all go into separate legal entities and those legal entities are then all owned by your family bank. You and your revocable trust have a 1% general partnership interest in the family bank uh, because we want you to have control. And you can, yeah, you control it through your 1% ownership stake. Uh, and you continue to own your home. There's a corollary here to rule number four about segregating assets. Uh, you want to keep your, your uh, personal and your business assets separate. Uh, uh, mixing personal and business assets can justify the court in treating everything like you own it personally. So the court can basically make everything that you own available to creditors. And that obviously defeats the whole purpose of what we're trying to do here. So you have the 1% general partnership in interest in your family bank, and then your asset vault trust has a 99% non-managing limited partnership interest in the family bank. Why non-managing? Because you want to have the control and never be in the position where the trustee of the asset vault trust can, uh, you know, can be transferring assets out. Or, you know, basically, you want to protect yourself. So, I know I'm going through a lot of advanced concepts here, and I just want you to get the basic idea so you can think, hey, uh, is this the type of planning I have in place now? But probably not. And if it is, do you need a second opinion to make sure everything's done right? Because again, this is a very rarefied legal niche. Uh, your regular estate attorney probably doesn't know how to do all of the things that we're talking about. Uh, and a lot of so-called asset protection lawyers dabble in this area, and so they don't know all of the details. So you've got to get a second opinion. It's kind of like if you were diagnosed with a rare form of extremely fatal cancer, you wouldn't say, okay. No, you'd go get a second opinion, right? And then once you've got this all set up, you want to sue yourself first. Now, this is a fascinating concept uh, that you've probably never heard of before. So what do we mean by sue yourself first? Well, if you sue yourself first, other people can't get anything from you. It's kind of like getting vaccinated. If you get the polio vaccine, you're, uh, you won't get polio later. So you secure your assets. Um, to, to secure your personal assets, for example, the, the, um, the house here that's in the corner, um, to secure your personal, or in the corner there, sorry. <laughs> to secure your personal assets, we use a line of credit from your limited partnership or the family bank. And uh, that line of credit is secured by all of your personal assets, your personal residence, your personal bank accounts, any vehicles, personal property, uh, any S Corp that you own personally, and your 1% interest in the uh, family bank, the asset management limited partnership. So what happens is uh, you have a line of credit secured by your personal assets. And when somebody sues you, when the, you know, the shark lawyer comes along uh, and you get attacked by a lawsuit, your family bank forecloses on your assets. So you're in a sense foreclosing on yourself. And the creditor ends up getting nothing. There's literally nothing to take. So this, this slide, by the way, just kind of shows what happens with your personal residence. After the family bank, your limited partnership has foreclosed on it and transferred the ownership. So is this legal? Well, yeah, bankers do it all the time. Uh, I mean, is it legal to take out a line of credit from your bank uh, secured by your house? Of course it is. And if you do, the bank is going to want to secure that line of credit with a mortgage on your house or some kind of asset, right? Uh, now, the bank doesn't ask for liens on your personal jewelry and cars and bank accounts and other things that, that we've talked about, merely because they would never get customers that way. Uh, but there's nothing preventing your family bank from doing that. Now, are you ready for the good part? I hope you never get sued, but if you do, and I'll, then what I'll do is I'll call the plaintiff's attorney and here's pretty much what I'll say. My client doesn't own any personal assets. If you proceed with a lawsuit against him, all your client is gonna get is a charging order against my client's limited partnership. A charging order means that your client has a right to any distributions from the uh, partnership that would otherwise go to my client, uh, but my client doesn't have to distribute any partnership income to your client. Uh, 
and my client can decide, by the way, to allocate all of the partner's taxable income to your client. Uh, so if there is income, uh, they can allocate all of that, uh, allocate the income, not distribute it, but allocate the taxable income um, to you, to your client, the, the future creditor, um, but not actually distribute any money. So your client will discover that your, the lawsuit will cost them a lot of money in the future. And your client will have to choose between getting nothing or becoming an ongoing debtor of the IRS. And by the way, I'm recording this call for quality assurance purposes, and I will gladly provide a copy of this recording to your client so he knows that you willingly and recklessly pursued a lawsuit, knowing that it will cost your client and make your client a debtor of the IRS. Are you sure you want to proceed with the lawsuit? <laughs> well, to date, no attorney has wanted to proceed under these circumstances. Uh, I've never had a, a case proceed against a client after making this call. And hopefully you never get sued and you never have to see me in action on this side of it. But literally, no opposing attorney has ever proceeded. 100% track record. I know nobody bats a thousand, but so far, every single time I've made the call, every single attorney has backed off. And no lawsuit seeking my client's personal or business assets has survived. So let's review uh, what we've covered so far. Number one, what you own can be taken from you. Number two, don't trust anyone, but rather maintain control and flexibility. Have checks and balances. Put your assets in a vault. Segregate your assets. Put risky assets into separate protective vehicles, such as LLCs and put your safe assets into the family bank, the limited partnership, and sue yourself first. Uh, way before anything bad happens, sue yourself right, right away so that the second, God forbid, something does happen, you can just foreclose on yourself uh, because you've already sued yourself and there's nothing for the creditors to get. Any, uh, any type of planning is most likely to be respected by the courts if it's done well in advance of lawsuits against you, so it's good to do this ahead of time. So. How many of you are excited? I, I mean, <laughs> this is good stuff that we're talking about, right? Uh, when I first started learning this stuff, it blew, it blew my mind. I said, how is this even possible? That's absolutely incredible. And then I found case after case of it working. And you should hear when I deliver that speech, by the way. The other attorneys just start sputtering. They're literally like, uh, uh, let me think about it. I've got to go talk to someone. I, I have to research this. And then they come back and the lawsuit goes away. Uh, they literally hung up the phone on me because they're like, damn it, there's no money here. I can't get anything. But I realize you're like drinking from a fire hose right now, right? We're throwing a lot of complicated advanced legal concepts at you in a very, very short period of time. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, you see, your eyes are probably wide open and your brain is spinning. You're like, oh my God, I didn't even know I could do any of this stuff. Uh, even number five alone, the whole sue yourself first concept. And, uh, and you can't just have any lawyer do this. You're not, by the way, you're not literally suing yourself. So don't go, don't go calling a lawyer and saying, oh, you, you have to take me to court because it's going to protect me from uh, lawsuits because <laughs> that's not exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about protective liens as if you've been sued. So um, after this is done, you can sleep at night knowing that your millions are protected and you don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. So is it okay if I share with you how the process works? Awesome. So let me tell you about the Bulletproof Your Assets program. First of all, let me talk to you. Let's make sure that you're the right fit for it. Um, who this is not for. This is not for you if you um, have watched some uh, TV shows about law and you think you're too smart for this, or if you, you know, think you know that, that you know it all, or maybe you shouldn't have been on this webcast in the first place. Uh, it's also not right for you if you're penny wise and pound foolish, as the Anatomy of Melancholy published in 1621 says if you're gonna step over dollars to pick up dimes, if you're gonna say, geez, I'm not willing to invest the money, that small amount in comparison to protect my millions, I'd rather lose it all than invest a, a small, tiny, tiny percentage to get where I need to be, then this isn't for you. And let me give you an anal analogy here. Let's take a general practitioner, a regular family physician in practice, average annual income again, because it depends on how many patients he sees, he's, he or she sees, and insurance reimburse, 
reimbursements and all of that good stuff. But let's say ballpark $100,000. Now, the husband of one of my assistant's wife's friends happens to be the number one surgeon, according to the local magazine of doctor's ratings or whatever it is, number one rated chief of surgery in upstate New York. His malpractice insurance premium alone, just the insurance premium is $1 million a year because of his profession, the risk that he can be sued because people are going to die, you know, if he makes a mistake. So nobody bats a thousand in brain surgery. He's going to get sued at some point. And the fact that he can afford to write a $1 million check every year for malpractice insurance and not worry about the million bucks shows you how much more he makes than a general practitioner. So we're not general practitioners. We're the brain surgeons of the asset protection industry. So if you're looking for bargain basement solutions here, if you're looking for cheap, or you're looking for some simple uh, sweetheart living will document, uh, this program is not for you. I built this program because I went through it myself. My own asset, protect, my, my own asset protection lawyer screwed up. Uh, so I went on a quest and I get laser focused when I'm trying to figure something out. And I figured out a better way. And then I found out that it worked. And then I didn't want anyone else to have to go through, uh, go through this if they didn't have to. So there are, like I mentioned, uh, highly marketed legal techniques, whether it's via seminars or TV ads, that just don't work. We're very much opposed to all of those. And if you've got one, for example, domestic asset protection trusts, uh, if you have one of those, uh, or you have any question at all about documents that you have, give us a call and you know we'll, we'll tell you the scoop about it, if they work or not. We only use proven techniques here at Magellan Law. The Asset Vault Trust has 200 years of proven case law, and it's supported by both federal and state courts, all state courts. Uh, now, we use newer strategies to add improvements sometimes, but we don't rely on them. For example, we might use a limited liability, limited partnership to protect the general partner of your family holding company. That's just a, a, a little twist on using a limited partnership. Uh, you know, there's also something called an Alaska trust or a Nevada trust that offers a little bit more privacy. Uh, you can't rely on them 100% though. Uh, and uh, Another thing is that um, everyone's situation is different. So we're not going to say that you absolutely need to have this little special thing or that little special thing. Uh, what we prefer to rely on, the foundation of the work that we do, is the same tried and true techniques that people like O.J. Simpson and Donald Trump use. Now, Kevin was referred to us because he operates a popular web website that reviews household products. And one of the manufacturers of those household products uh, sued him for defamation because he gave them a negative review. Kevin wanted me to protect his assets after he had already been sued. And that's another thing you need to watch out for. Both you and I can get into legal trouble if we transfer your assets when there's already a known legal claim, even if the lawsuit hasn't been filed yet. Uh, I was able to avoid these landmines and offer him some protection from the manufacturer, plus lock down his assets for any future liabilities. Now, this is high stakes work that we're talking about, and it should only be performed by the most experienced of attorneys. Also, when I later discovered that an asset vault trust would be better for him, I amended his documents at no extra charge, and that's part of my lifetime warranty. Now, Susan came to us because her sister is jealous and highly litigious. Susan's sister had no valid claim. She's just angry and likes suing people. Uh, you may know some client or some person in your life that's a little bit like that. Maybe you're a little bit worried about the person. Uh, I, I mean, we all know someone like that, right? Like the lady who spilled coffee at McDonald's. Come on, she knew that the coffee was going to be hot. Uh, when Susan came to us, her mother was likely to pass away and Susan wanted to transfer her savings plus her future inheritance to something to protect it from her sister because she knew that her sister was going to sue. We were able to protect Susan's assets, so her sister was never able to get anything. Susan did later get sued, unfortunately, and I made the magic call to the other lawyer. And, he, and I gave him that speech and informed him that there was no way the sister was going to be able to get anything from Susan. So the other lawyer immediately dismissed the court proceeding. And I, again, I hope you never have to see it, but it is a thing of beauty. 
So let's talk about the Bulletproof Your Assets program. First, we're going to map out everything that you own or control now uh, and who all of your other advisors are. And we're going to get all of your other advisors, your CPA, your financial advisor, your state attorney, your family law attorney, get them all on the same page about what we're doing and why we're doing it. And, uh, and, and that's going to take some time on our part, some, uh, some education on our part. Then we're going to set you up with your own asset vault trust. Remember, it's backed by how many years of case law? 200 years of case law. And then we're going to create your family bank, the Asset Management Family Limited Partnership, where your non-risky assets go. Uh, then we're going to do asset segregation, just like Walmart and McDonald's do. Uh, so your rental properties, your business vehicles, your commercial office buildings, helicopters, airplanes, whatever potentially risky things that you own, will go into separate LLCs, each to be owned by the family bank. Then we'll help you actually uh, trans uh, transfer things to your entities, fund your entities. One of the main ways that common asset protection plans fail is by improper funding. If you go buy some uh, irrevocable trust from your local attorney and get your documents signed and you think you're good, but you never actually get the assets transferred to the right places, then they're useless uh, and you've basically wasted your money. So we see this all the time. Then we're going to do the preventative liens, the sue yourself first part. Again, it's kind of like getting vaccinated. Uh, so we'll create a line of credit promissory note from your family bank to you personally secured by your uh, personal assets. And then if you get sued or file bankruptcy, uh, we can have your family bank foreclose on your personal assets. And you'll always have flexibility and you're sued first, which makes you a very undesirable legal target because you've already been sued. Uh, you have no assets left for anyone to go after or to sue, sue you for. We'll put checks and balances in place on your trustee, just like the trust protector, um, a third party who can enforce your wishes, who's emotionally objective and unbiased. And it's usually our law firm, uh, but it can be anyone that you really, really trust. Uh, so the amount of time that it takes us to at our hourly rate to get the asset protection team set up in place, educate your other attorneys, your accountants, your insur insurance agents, uh, everyone on our team, on your team, coordinate everybody, uh, get everyone on the same page so that they know exactly what to do. Normally the retail price for that based on our hourly rate is $7,500. The asset vault trust, if you were to get it on your own is $10,000 or more. And Part of that is based on just um, competitive market rates for what other lawyers charge for uh, domestic asset protection trusts, which I don't believe in. Uh, and I, I guess I figured that I can charge the same amount for something that actually does work all the time. The family bank costs about $5,000 to set up. Asset segregation, um, I just say priceless because otherwise if one of your attorneys is involved in a lawsuit, some or all of your other assets can be used to pay the judgment. Um, so potentially your whole net worth is at stake. Uh, so what's the, what's the dollar value of that, of your net worth? We didn't put it here because, I mean, how much in assets do you have? If you have a net worth of $3 million, the asset segregation is worth $3 million because it prevents you from being sued for $3 million. And if you're worth 10 million, it's worth 10 million. So we just put priceless. The entity funding and actually getting it done so it actually works. And, and again, what's the value of your assets? If you don't transfer things to the right vehicles, uh, legal entities, um, then they're not protected. And then the preventative liens, the sue yourself first process is another $10,000. Then appointing the trust protector with the best language in your documents and making sure that everything gets done right, exactly the way that it should. And the fact that this is a high stakes legal scenario is another $10,000. And that all adds up to a manufacturer's suggested retail price of $42,500. But there's more. We have a 60-day, no questions asked, money-back guarantee. If you're unhappy at all with our service in the first 60 days and, and what's being done for you, just say the word and we'll immediately give you back your money. We also have the lifetime warranty that I talked about early, earlier. 
And we haven't found another attorney in this field that has one. And what a lifetime warranty means is if we're ever able to come up with anything better, if the law changes, if, if a new legal technique comes about that works better than what you have and something needs to be changed, we will amend those documents and recreate whatever it is that you need at no additional charge, just like we did for Kevin earlier. Now, because you're on this webcast and part of a marketing test, we're gonna throw in some sweeteners and some bonuses if you enroll through this online program. And don't worry, I'm not gonna ask, ask you to write a check for $40,000 because we don't know if it's right for you yet. Uh, so number one, if you come in through this online program, we'll give you a last will and testament, a new one, uh, you know, up-to-date version. Your, prob your life probably has changed since the last one you have, or maybe you don't have one, uh, absolutely for free. We'll draft your healthcare power of attorney for free. We'll set up your general power of attorney for free. We'll set up your living will, the when to pull the plug document for free. And we'll throw in three separate LLCs to segregate some of those risky assets of yours for free. We'll also implement our badge of fraud prevention process to make sure that all of your docu documents pass the sniff test so that you never have any fraudulent transfer issues. Everything will stand up to the strictest investigation by a plaintiff attorney. And then we'll also provide our strategic access financial emergency service. Hopefully you never have had to go through a health or financial emergency, but if you have, it, you, know, you know that it can be very emotionally overwhelming and also financially overwhelming because you don't know what to do. So literally what we do is we set you up with both a physical and a virtual document safe. We'll create all of the folders for you, put all of your documents in the right place, in the right order, uh, and in the right folders. Many of our clients like to travel and spend time outside the United States. Uh, but if, you're, if you have any kind of an emergency when you're outside the US, it doesn't do much good to have your, your documents in a safe deposit box or in a you know, safe place in your home or something if you're outside of the country. So what we do is we set you up with a program so you and your loved ones can access your important documents anytime from any place in the world. Plus, as clients, you have the benefit of being able to call or email anytime in case of an emergency. We'll guide you through the legal process, and if needed, we can email documents to you or um, draft documents you know, in an emergency. Um, you know, we have lots of ways of figuring things out. A lot of our clients travel. Um, so you'll never have the emotional ramifications of the, uh, you'll only have the emotional ramifications of the healthcare crisis or the emergency. And this is really important. We have a colleague of ours who husband and wife got divorced and they both remarried. Uh, so he's now with his new wife and it's recent, like within six months after the wedding. He and his wife, uh, she gets a vicious migraine. Uh, he doesn't know it's a migraine, vicious headache. She loses consciousness and he takes her to the emergency room. The, the ER staff asks, well, what meds is she on? Uh, he doesn't know. Do you have a healthcare proxy, power of attorney? Uh, yeah, um, where is it? And they're asking all, all these kinds of questions about medications and um, her preferences and all this stuff, uh, uh, prior surgeries, whatever. Um, well, where's the healthcare proxy? It's at home. Go home and get it. Uh, because he doesn't know to bring it with him, even though he's a um, financial advisor himself. So he goes home, gets the healthcare proxy, and goes back to the hospital. And wouldn't you know it, the healthcare proxy still lists her ex husband. Uh, as being in charge. And they're not on good terms, by the way. So he literally, the ex-husband literally has to uh, make the call about um, talking to the ER staff and talking to the pharmacy and releasing records and uh, uh, getting, uh, getting information and making medical decisions for his ex-wife. And you don't want that to happen. So that's why we have the safe service. Um, so that you know exactly what to do and everything's in the right place. And another part of it is that uh, you, when you have, for your car, you have a 10,000 mile checkup, right? Uh, or, you know, maybe you get periodic emails or uh, text messages or, you know, some kind of message about, you know, your uh, tires are low in air or you need to change the oil or something like that. Well, part of the SAFE program 
is that we send you annual summaries of who's appointed as trustee and your, um, who are your powers of attorney and your beneficiaries. And this, by the way, could have prevented the situation I just told you about because uh, it would have reminded the, um, the lady that she still has her ex-husband listed as the one making all the decisions. And so also we warn you about loose ends and you know things that are missing, things that need to be done and require your, your attention. So it's easy to get a false sense of security when you purchase legal documents and make mistakes. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, when you purchase legal documents, you can get a false sense of security, but uh, the mistakes happen because of improper maintenance. So that's why the SAFE program is so essential. And again, the 60-day money-back guarantee is worth $40,000 because that's how much money you'd be getting back if you uh, didn't like what we were doing. The lifetime warranty is priceless. If the law changes and your documents are no longer good, you could end up with no protection, but we'll update your documents for no charge if the law changes. The last will and testament, we normally charge $1,000 for. The healthcare powers of attorney are $250. Living wills are $250. Three LLCs together are $3,900. The badge of fraud, fraud prevention is priceless because uh, fraudulent transfers, uh, badges of fraud is one of, the, uh, one of the legal theories that is encapsulated within fraudulent transfer. And that's one of the ways that uh, asset protection plans can uh, blow up or be pierced. And we normally charge $1,000 for the safe service. So if you add that all up, that's $48,900 of retail value. So you can finally sleep at night knowing that you're bulletproof from a frivolous lawsuit or, or even a legitimate lawsuit, a divorce, IRS audit, government action, accidents, you name it, anything that can go wrong. Now you can't buy this. Um, I told you I was not going to ask you to write a check for $40,000 because we don't know if this is right for you. And uh, we can't help everyone. The service simply isn't right for everyone. You have to apply. So what we're going to do next is there's a button below this video where you can, where you're going to go to click that button and you punch in your contact information and your credit card. And we're going to charge you $197 as a deposit for your bulletproof your assets discovery session. And then what happens on that session? Well, on that session, uh, you'll get on the phone with me and I'll go through your current situation, uh, what you're trying to protect, uh, what assets you have, uh, what you're most concerned about and what you want protected from, what, what you want to be protected from, you know, God forbid. Um, I'll go through the whole thing and let you know if the Bulletproof Your Assets program will work for you. You'll get a ton of education from it on, on, from the call. However, if for any reason you feel like it's a waste of your time, we'll donate the $197 to your favorite charity. And if it makes sense, if it's appropriate for you and you wanna move forward, you'll get the Asset Protection Team Management, the Asset Vault Trust, the Family Bank, the Asset Segregation, the Entity Funding, the Sue Yourself First Program, the Trust Protector, 60-day Money Back Guarantee, the Lifetime Warranty, the Last Will and Testaments, the Healthcare Powers of Attorney, the Living Wills, three LLCs, badges of fraud prevention, and the safe service. For, uh, again, we added that up to over $48,000 of value, but not for 48, not for 40, not for 30,000, for $25,000. Again, the Asset Vault Trust, the Family Bank, the Sue Yourself First, the uh, Fraudulent Transfer Protection, uh, and uh, assist assistance in funding your entities, uh, the trust protector, the last will and testament, healthcare power of attorney, general power of attorney, living will, three LLCs, badge of fraud prevention, and the safe service, all for only $25,000, which is a bargain in comparison to what it would cost you in legal fees had you been sued and had to defend yourself from the lawsuit as opposed to me making it go away. What, what I want you to do now is, again, if you're a business owner, a high-profile individual, a doctor, a lawyer, or an investor worth over $3 million, and you're concerned at all about how to protect your wealth or, and how, how your wealth could be taken from you in the event of any of these unforeseen uh, circumstances that we talked about before, 
and you want to have a conversation about how the Bulletproof Your Assets program could work in your specific situation. Because again, this has been a generic education as opposed to a specific legal advice for you. Click the button below and pay your $197 deposit and schedule your Bulletproof Your Assets discovery session now.